it is Erica Janelle with another episode of Relationship Talks with Erica Janelle. I am the only Erica Janelle. Wanted to come before you guys today. Sorry, I'm not all dolled up today. I just went hiking. Now I'm cooking and doing all kinds of things that I need to do to prepare for the week. But I did not want my day to go by without me checking in with my podcast family and sharing something that I think is so essential when it comes to relationships and how important it is to be in this constant state of learning how to forgive and what forgiveness looks like and what forgiveness does not look like. So one of the things that I want to bring up about forgiveness is just because you forgive a person, I want to start off by saying this, just because you forgive a person, that does not mean that you give that person free access to continue to come into your life, hurt you, abuse you, damage you, mistreat you, misuse you. That is not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is a decision that starts internally and then it starts to manifest itself in your actions. So I want to talk about the importance of forgiveness in relationships and what it looks like and what it does not look like. So let's start in the very beginning. So say for instance, you're in a situation in your relationship where either your partner lied to you about something, maybe they were unfaithful, maybe they, you know, deceived you or they didn't tell you something because we know that omission is just as bad as committing whatever it is that you've um, done. So omitting certain things that you're supposed to talk to your, your, your spouse or your partner about and you didn't do that or actually performing some type of act or doing something that actually caused that person to be damaged in some way requires or or should warrant forgiveness or you should want to have forgiveness. So I want to start off by talking about the fact that when you do something that you know offends or hurts your partner in whatever capacity that may be, whether it's large or something small, one of the biggest things for the person on the receiving end of whatever that is, whether it's a hurt, a pain, a deception, a lie, an omission, whatever that looks like. One of the things that the person that's on the receiving end of it is looking for is not just you to say that you're sorry, but to for you to show a change in your behavior. Because we oftentimes think that just saying I'm sorry is good enough. But if you continue on that same trajectory and have that same pattern and that same history, then really, are you really sorry? Or are you at least trying to change that trajectory? Because if there's no proof that you're trying to do something different than whatever you did that offended or hurt your, par your partner in the beginning, then you really haven't done, the due done your due diligence to even ask for someone's forgiveness. So for the person that has committed whatever the offense was, your job is to make sure that you are changing your actions and you can show them in real time, if not right away, but over a course of time, what that change in behavior or action is. So the person that's on the receiving end, then they need to take the actions and or the things that you have done to change that behavior or that situation, they need to be taking into account the things that you are doing differently to ensure that you don't hurt them in that same way. So there's two responsibilities when it comes to forgiveness. You have a responsibility as the person that actually did something to cause a person to have to forgive you. And then the person that's on the receiving end of the forgiving needs to be able to see some type of actionable proof that you are doing something different. And as we know, it's, it's been said many times, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing, but expecting a different result. So if you are continuing to do the same behavior, so let's take, for example, let's, I like examples, examples help us. So let's take, for example, you have a person that is known to lie to you all the time. If this person has lied to you about something, or even, even if it's not all the time, if they, if you caught them in a lie or you found out that they lied to you about something, we know that lying is one of the biggest ways to break somebody's trust. And once you break trust, it's very, very difficult to get it back. And in order for you to be able to come to that person and say, I'm so sorry for lying to you about this. It will never happen again. I will be honest with you, even if it hurts, even if it's something hard for you to hear. I, I want to make a decision. I want to make a commitment to you right now that I'm not going to lie to you again, even when it's hard. And that person says, okay, I will accept your apology and I will forgive you. 
Now, how many of you guys know that just because you say you forgive them, that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. That doesn't mean that you don't still feel something. That doesn't mean that you immediately trust them again. Forgiveness is a decision. And that's the first thing I want to talk about. Forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness is not emotion. Forgiveness is an action. You make a, you set your mind and your will and your emotions to forgive that person. In other words, I set my mind to forgive you, my will to forgive you. I purposely choose to forgive you despite the fact that I'm still hurt by it, despite the fact that it still causes me to mistrust you, despite the fact that, you know, it's going to take a process for me to build and rebuild that trust with you. I am intentionally deciding right now to forgive you for lying to me. Okay. So you say that now when you find it's automatic, it's in human behavior. Let's be real. We're not robots. We're not these fantastic beings that never do anything wrong and we get it right every time we all are imperfect right so in the course of that time say for instance your spouse or your mate just you know they were working late and say for instance the thing that they lied to you about was saying that they were somewhere that they were not when they were actually hanging out with their homies and they told you that they were still working late but in actuality they went to a bar and hung out with their homies and when they got home they was a little drunk we just we just making this up okay so say, for instance, you, you set your will, you forgave that person, you made a decision to walk in forgiveness with that person. Now, your person may be working late for real this time, and then they call you and say, hey, I know the last time I said I was working late, I wasn't really working late, but this time I'm actually working late, and I wanted to give you a call, give you a heads up, and let you know that I'll be home a little late. I plan on finishing up at, let's say, 6.30 p.m., when their regular time to get off is 5 o'clock p.m., okay? So they came to you, they communicated, they did that, they gave you some actionable changes, Okay, so they changed their trajectory. In other words, instead of just saying I'm working late and then, you know, doing something else, they actually called and said, hey, I'm giving you a warning. I'm giving you a, a heads up. I am going to be working late. I plan on leaving by 630. Hey, you know, I'll see you when I get back, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so uh, the person on the receiving end that was already damaged by their first lie, I'm pretty sure has some doubts that's creeping in or seeping in on their subconscious because they're like, okay, well, that's what he said last time. And now I found out that he's at the bar drinking with his homies instead of, you know, just being honest and telling me he, you know, that's what he wanted to do. So the first thing in your mind is going to be like, is he really where he says it's going to be? So that person may require of the person that committed the offense to do something a little extra to prove to them that they're where they say they are. Because let's be clear, if you really truly want that person to forgive you and you're really truly sorry, you will do whatever you got to do to build that trust back because it was you that destroyed the trust in the beginning. So let's say the, the, the person on the other end says, hey, um, I hear what you're saying that you're going to be actually working late, but can you um, show me proof that you're in the office? Can you drop me your location? We just, we just making this up. And you know, the person that, that committed the, the lie may be a little bit taken back by that. Like, oh, you don't trust me? You don't trust that when I say what I say, that I mean what I say? And you could very well be the person on the receiving and say no, because you've already broken my trust there. So it's on you to require, you know, to do whatever is needed for me to build, rebuild that trust with you. So let's say they had that conversation and that person said, okay, even though I don't agree with this, I'm going to do whatever I got to do since it was my fault. It was my responsibility for breaking that trust. And that person goes ahead and does that. That's a realistic expectation that the person that committed the offense that required the forgiveness has to be willing to go over and above in order to make sure that you rest that person's mind. Now, that's a little bit you know, it could be perceived as a little bit over the top. That would be a little over the top for me. I'm a person that if you tell me you're going to do something and you don't do it, I believe you the first time that I can't necessarily trust your word. <laughs> now, if I say I forgive you and I say I'm giving you a clean slate, then I'm going to trust you until I find other, until I find out something otherwise. That's how I operate. I'm not going to operate in a place of, I need you to check in every 30 minutes. And do, that right there is draining. And I don't even like anybody to talk to me every 30 minutes. So that's too much for me. That's my personality. But for somebody else, say for instance, the offense was something more horrific like cheating or, you know, 
taking money out of a joint account and using it for something that you didn't tell your spice, spouse about. Those types of things happen every day. And in those more, more astronomical situations, you have to be willing to do whatever you got to do in order to get that person's trust back. So if it means that person says, hey, I want to trust you, but right now I'm still a little bit damaged by what you did. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my money out of the joint account for right now until I feel like you have shown me and proven to me that you're not going to do something outside of the, 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 the scope of what we agreed to. If that's the, the consequences that you have to suffer for being the person that did something like that, then you have to take that in on the chin. Basically, you got to take it on the chin. Forgiveness is starts with a decision, but then it follows up with the actions that you take to prove that you've changed your behavior or you've changed the thing that you've done incorrectly to break the trust to begin with. So it's very difficult to, to build trust once it's been broken, once it's been destroyed. It's not impossible, but it is difficult. So the person that has committed whatever offense is, is deemed as needing to be forgiven, that person needs to be willing to humble themselves enough to be able to do what is necessary to make sure that they, they make that other person comfortable and start to build their trust again. So I say all of that to say it's a process and it's not going to be easy all the time and you're not going to get it right all the time. And it doesn't mean that your feelings and your emotions won't feel a certain kind of way when you said you've decided to forgive a person. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you for having feelings or feeling a certain kind of way because you didn't, you know, get the results that you wanted. It's okay. That's normal. That's natural. We're humans. We're not robots. Okay. We have feelings. We have emotions. So the best way to handle that is to create a realistic, and I say realistic for the person that's supposed to be the one walking in forgiveness, create a realistic plan or path that that person can take in order to help build your trust. So you've got to be able to examine what it is that they need to do to make you feel more comfortable in trusting them again. So in the instance of say, let's, let's talk about something that happens every day. Let's talk about cheating. So say, for instance, your partner cheated on you and that's a big one. That's a big one. Just like the money thing is a big one. When somebody cheats on you, it is very, very difficult for you not to one, feel like it's something wrong with you or two, to, to be able to trust them every time that they go outside of that door and they're not around you because you're going to automatically think. It's natural to automatically think, okay, every time that they say they're doing X, Y, and Z, they might be out here sleeping with that person again or somebody else for that matter. So in those types of instances, it is totally not unrealistic for the person on the receiving end that's supposed to walk in forgiveness to demand that that person starts to check in or drops their location or whatever the case may be and does what needs to be done in order for them to start to build that trust. That's going to be essential. So for those of you that have done something, because we all are going to do something to hurt our partner, whether intentionally or unintentionally, we all are going to do something that sets our partner off in a negative way. So your responsibility as the person that is the offender is to be willing to be humble and take whatever steps you've got to take to help that person rebuild their trust, whatever that means. And it should be something that you guys can talk about. So the person that's on the receiving end that's supposed to do the forgiving, they need to come up with a plan of what it's going to take for them to be able to build that trust. But then the person that is the offender needs to take the time to be willing to implement whatever it is that they agreed upon as far as the steps that they would take to help build that trust. Is it a foolproof, uh, a foolproof um, method? Not necessarily, but it takes commitment. It takes a level of commitment to be the one to forgive and it takes a level of commitment and tangible, intentional actions on the person, on the offender's part to be forgiven. So I say all of that to say, and I wrap this up in a nice little bow before we go. I just want to let you guys know, is it impossible to forgive somebody after they've done an egregious offense against you? No. Is it difficult? Yes but it is something that can be worked on. And we all are imperfect. We all are going to make mistakes. That doesn't mean that you keep forgiving somebody if they keep cheating on you or they keep lying to you or they keep stealing from you or they keep, you know, doing something that's really, really egregious to your family and to your unit, then 
you can't keep saying, I, I, I want you to forgive me, but you keep having the same behavior. Because at the end of the day, changed behavior is going to be the thing that's going to show me that you're really serious, that you really meant that you were sorry for the action that you took. So I want to I wanna leave that with you guys today, but then I want to bring something in that I feel like I need to discuss because I need to put this, it's in my heart and it's in my spirit, so I know I need to say it. The flip side of that is you can forgive somebody all day long and never talk to them again. Just let that sink in for a second. Remember, I started, forgiveness is a decision. It is not, it starts with a decision and then your feelings start to, to shift with your decision and the boundaries that you set to protect that decision. So I'll use myself as an example. I forgive my abusers, but that does not mean I will ever deal with them in any way, shape, or form. I can cut you off and release you for my mental health's sake, but still walk in forgiveness towards you, but not necessarily ever speak to you again in life. I choose to get my own closure and forgive my abusers for my sake. It ain't about them. It is for my sake. I don't want anything hindering me or blocking me from being able to, to receive the best that God has for me, whether it be in tangible things, spiritual things, physical things, whatever. I don't want anybody to have that much control over me to where I let my bitterness and my anger hold me back from being able to receive all of the things that are, for, are meant for me. That's how I look at forgiveness. So I have done this work. I have done this process of forgiving my abusers. I have done that process of releasing them and being okay with never speaking to them again. Forgiveness doesn't mean you have to in invite them into your life or invite them into your world or invite them into your peace. It just means that you make peace within yourself and you get your own closure. I don't wait for somebody to give me closure. I get my own closure. I make my closure. I create my closure. I don't need you to give it to me because I can't, if, that, if I give you the power to give it to me or take it away from me, if you choose not to give it to me, then I'm stuck with all that negative energy, all that bitterness and anger and unforgiveness. And it's only hurting me internally. So I've always told my clients, my coaching clients, I tell my friends, forgiveness is your, that's for you. It is a decision that you make for your well-being and for your mental health. And another thing I want to make sure that I add, because I hear it in my spirit. Just because you forgive, like say for, and we're talking relationships because that's what this podcast is about. You forgive your partner for whatever, but that person is consistently berating you or being emotionally abusive, physically abusive, you know, whatever the case may be. Just because you forgive them does not mean that you give them access to you. Some people are toxic and you need to cut them out of your life completely. Does that mean you don't forgive them? No, it just means, because like I told you, forgiveness is internal. It's for you. It's you releasing them, releasing the pain and the, the remnants of what they've done to you, giving that to God and moving forward with your life. Do not keep letting somebody that hurts you and abuses you or mistreats you into your mental health and into your life. They do not belong there. If they're hurting you and, 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 and hindering you from growing and becoming the best version of yourself, they got to go. It's okay to let people go that are not benefiting you. I absolutely encourage you guys to love and value yourself. You know, I've preached that every day on this channel. Love and value yourself enough to not let anybody hurt you or damage you or abuse you. We have to love ourselves. My love for me trumps love from anybody else other than God himself. The love I have for me is always going to trump any love that I have for another person. I have to love me enough to know when it's beneficial for me to protect my mental health. And that means removing a person out of my life. It is okay. And it is advised that you remove people that are toxic in your life. That could be friends. That could be family. That could be a spouse. That could be a partner. That could be anybody. People that disrupt your peace and that bring you harm, hurt, pain, and anguish don't deserve the benefit of your energy. And it's okay to remove them, but just make sure you're not holding on to bitterness and unforgiveness. It is a process. It is a 
It is a, it's a, it has to be intentional and on purpose. So I encourage you guys to start that process. So think of all those people and all those things that you've been holding on to. Write them down on a piece of paper. And what I do is I, I name those situations and or those people out loud. And then I burn it and I release it to God. And from that day forward, I'm done with that person or I'm done with that situation. I release it. It's for me. It's for my mental health. And that's how I move forward. I hope this helps you guys. I hope this was a blessing to you guys. I know it blesses me because I practice this daily. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to say daily, but I practice it often. Uh, when people disappoint me or hurt me or abuse me or try to use me or whatever the case may be, I practice this. And I know that you can do the same. I love you guys. I hope this encourages you today. Have an amazing week and I'll be seeing you guys soon. Love you guys. Bye.